Alright, let's talk about the darcy Weisbach equation. For a while, um, we've been using our energy head equation, our total energy head equation, to find pump heads, turbine heads, and uh, frictional uh, losses. And that equation was our change in total energy head is equal to the energy head coming out of the system, or the pipe, minus the energy head coming in, and that's equal to all of the pump heads, minus all of the turbine heads, minus all of the uh, frictional uh, head losses. Now, most of the time in problems, we were given, we were given this. They would say that the frictional loss is seven feet or five meters in a pipe. But we can actually use this equation um, or use um, the darcy Weisbach equation to find HF in a simple pipe. And, and we can do that using the, uh, the equation HF is equal to 32 mu times L over uh, the specific weight times the diameter squared and all of this times the average velocity. So, if we had a pipe, right? If we had a pipe we'd have a diameter D, right, which is this D over here. We'd have the specific weight of the fluid that's running through the pipe. We'd have the velocity, or the average velocity, of that fluid in this pipe. And then we'd have the length, L, of this pipe. And then we'd have the viscosity of this fluid. And usually viscosity is, is given or we can find it in a table. But if we were to say that um, the Greek letter nu is equal to or is defined as the kinematic viscosity which is equal to mu over the density of the fluid. Mu over rho. If that's the case, we can rewrite this equation to be 32 mu L, uh, and then gamma is rho G, right, times D squared, times the velocity average, and if we said this was true, if nu was equal to mu over rho, mu over rho, we can rewrite that as 32 nu L, the length of the pipe, over G D squared times the velocity average. Okay? So we'll call this equation 1. Um, but if we were given a system and they said we needed to find the pump head, there's no turbines, but we can, they've given us enough information to find the frictional head loss. We can use equation one to do so. Now, one important thing to remember is that equation one, let me rewrite it down here, 32 mu L, I'm going to bring the velocity up here, velocity average over gamma times d squared. Equation 1 only holds true for what we call laminar flow. Laminar flow. And all laminar flow is, just think of it as um, just slow. Slow flow. Slow flow. Okay, so for studying a fluid in a pipe, and it's not going very fast, uh, we can say that that flow or that fluid is laminar, right? It's not moving too fast, it's just kind of 
moving slow. We can only use equation 1 for laminar flow. Now for fast flow, or what we call turbulent flow, or fast flow, we use HF is equal to what we call F, um, the frictional factor, or the friction factor, times the length of the pipe over the diameter of the pipe, times the average velocity squared over 2 times gravity. And we'll call this equation 2. So we have one equation up here, another equation down here, and I guess we can call this equation 3. Uh, nu is equal to the viscosity over the density of the fluid. And this, this is actually the darcy weisbach equation. And what we said here to be F, this F here, is the friction factor. And that's defined to be 64 over something called the Reynolds number. And the frictional factor is actually a dimensionless unit. Uh, so it doesn't have a unit. And we said RE is equal to something we call Reynolds number. Reynolds number. And the Reynolds number is just a number we use to describe whether a flow is laminar or whether a flow is turbulent. Now, many books have different um, limitations on what laminar flow is and turbulent flow. Now, for the sake of simplicity and just understanding the concept, we'll say that, yeah, let me do that in a different color. We'll say that laminar flow, so laminar flow, laminar flow or slow flow, is, oh, by the way, Reynolds number, the equation to find Reynolds number is the average velocity times the diameter of the pipe over um, the kinematic viscosity nu, which is up here, right? Now, for laminar flow, which is also slow flow, um, the Reynolds number, which is V average over D um, over nu needs to be less than 2,000, okay? So just for the sake of simplicity, for the sake of understanding how to do these problems, let's just say, I know many books use 2,100, 2,200, some even lower than this, but we just like good even numbers to understand concepts. We'll say that the Reynolds number, if the Reynolds number, if if this equation we find to be less than 2,000, if this number comes out to be less than 2,000, it's laminar flow. Reynolds number is less than 2,000, it's laminar flow. Now for turbulent or fast flow, we can say that the Reynolds number, which is also V average over, I mean, V average times the diameter of the pipe over new needs to be greater than 2,000. And if if the Reynolds number is equal to 2,000, we, we just call that a transition point. It's the point where the flow is changing from laminar to turbulent or from turbulent to laminar, okay? And for all of these, we, we know that, um, well, let, let's rewrite the equation. So for, let's just sum up really quick, for laminar flow, um, we have our equation HF is equal to 32 mu L times the average velocity over gamma times D squared for turbulent floor, flow, turbulent flow we'll say HF is equal to the frictional factor, which is 
dimensionless uh, times L over D times the velocity average squared over 2G and where F where F is equal to 64 over the Reynolds number. And then we can go even further and say uh, that the Reynolds number is equal to uh, the average velocity times the diameter times nu. So, so a lot of equations for here, for this turbulent flow we have. This equation, this equation, this equation. All right? And for all of these, we, we can say that the kinematic viscosity is equal to the viscosity of the fluid over the density of the fluid, okay? And we can, we can use these two equations to find our frictional head losses instead of them giving us, you know, the, the losses. And so we have laminar flow here. We have turbulent flow here. And um, for, for problems in the future, if we don't know whether the flow is laminar or turbulent, we always assume that the flow is laminar. And then we can plug in our numbers that we find, and if we find out that, that our Reynolds number is less than 2,000, we were correct, and we, we, our assumption is right, and it was laminar flow. If it's greater than 2,000, then it's obviously turbulent flow, and we use um, all of these equations down here, okay?